If you're using Home Assistant, you already know how powerful dashboards can be. But when it comes to controlling your heating or cooling, then there are better options than the default thermostat cards. In this video, I'll walk you through the best thermostat card options for Home Assistant, how they look, and how to get them set up so that your dashboard is not only functional, but actually enjoyable to use. Hey everyone, my name's Simon and welcome to a new video on Byte of Geek, a channel that focuses on home assistant and smart home technology. So if you've got a smart home heating or cooling system, or maybe even just a smart radiator valves, then having something on your dashboard that not only you but your family can easily control is a must have to keep everyone happy in the house. In this video, I've got five cards that you can install via the Home Assistant Community Store to add that certain something to your smart home dashboards. If you haven't already got hacks installed, then I've got a video on the channel that goes through the simple steps to do this. I'll put a link in the description of this video if you want to go and check that out. Now, just to start with, Home Assistant already has a pretty good built-in thermostat card that I'm sure many will find to be perfectly adequate for their needs. In terms of design, it blends in with the rest of the standard Home Assistant controls and has a good level of configuration. The following five cards, however, all offer something different. I'll put a link to each of these cards in the description below if you want to check them out yourself. So first of all, we have the Lovelace Simple Thermostat card. Now, what I like about this is that it's not your normal dial type thermostat card. In fact, it's very reminiscent of a heating controller you probably got with your heating system. It's got controls for heating and cooling and displays your humidity as well. And the temperature control is clearly laid out with simple up and down controls. If you find this too big on your dashboard, then it can also be configured to be a compact card. So maybe you have a large card uh, on your whole house control dashboard, and then on your room level dashboards, you have the more compact version of the card. It's got a lot of configurable options and some good examples as well. So it should be straightforward for you to get set up. You can style it further using card mod if you want and the various CSS variables are listed out for you which makes it a lot easier than poking around in the page code itself. After installing it via hacks you now have a new card available for your dashboard and that is simple thermostat. Select your entity and then select the options you want for the card. One nice touch here uh, is this toggle entity which allows you to specify another entity to control which you know could be a light in that room for example and that will be shown as a toggle switch on the card. Now once it's on the dashboard there are a few things just to note you've got these placeholder values here at the side which I'd prefer not to see but once you start with further card configuration as I've done here then the layout of the card really starts to take shape. And as you can see, I'm going to use the entity toggle and put my lounge lights on this card. And when we go back to the dashboard, I think it looks a lot better now, clean and easy to use. And without any changes to the styling, it fits in nicely with the rest of the Home Assistant cards. Now, I'm sure many people will already have this next card installed, but if you've not come across Mushroom before, then it's definitely worth downloading that from Hacks because there are a lot of great cards in there. Some similar to the standard Home Assistant ones, but nevertheless plenty there to make a great dashboard. And one of those cards is the Mushroom Climate card. Again, this is a card with a good level of configuration and it's easy to do this via the UI. In its simplest form, you can have this just showing you the temperature of the room. In fact, I use this card along with an Akara temperature sensor in my bathroom to display the current temperature in there. This is a compact card compared to the others in this video. And if you're trying to cram as much as possible onto your dashboard, then this may be the option to go with. You can even have it collapse a little more when it's in an off state, just to save a little more space on your dashboard. As you can see, it's easy to configure 
just as you want with HVAC modes and whether you want the temperature controls displayed or not. Just like the standard cards in Home Assistant, you can have the card horizontal or vertical to suit your needs and allows for you to create something that is really easy for anyone in your household to understand and use. The third thermostat card on the list is again something a bit different and maybe for those of you that like to have as much detail and control as possible in a small space and that is the mini climate card. As you can see this is a horizontal card that really aims to pack a lot of functionality in a small area. The developer has put a lot of effort into this card with plenty of options and configuration available to the user which I'll go through in just a moment. So once installed via Hacks, you can just add it as a card in the normal way, searching for Mini Climate. And with just a couple of lines of YAML, I've got a really functional card for my lounge area with heating controls, current temperature, whether the heating is on or off in that room. And if I click on the room name, then I've got the room control card pop up as well. Super simple to get something up and running within seconds really. But like I say, the developer has built in lots of configuration for this card and you can change the temperature details, the target temperature, the stepping uh, when you're making temperature adjustments, what information is displayed, HVAC controls and what you have displayed for that. There really is a lot to play with on this card, including being able to add buttons to it as well. Again, if you want to theme the card beyond what is out of the box, then the developer has listed the CSS variables to make it easier for you. And they've also provided good example configuration as well. Next up, we have a card for those of you that want a dial type card, but also want to keep it simple. And in the Lovelace thermostat card, not to be confused with one of the earlier cards I've gonna mention, I think we actually have that. This card keeps things really simple. Most of the configuration for this card is to do with the styling. The size of the card you get when you put it on your dashboard is the size it is. You can't change that. Everything is really clear, but you can change a few things up like the chevron size for adjusting the temperature, for example, adding the ambient temperature. If maybe you've got a device that can report that and you've also got a few other styling options, but that is really about it. Again, a simple card that is perfect for bringing along those family members who aren't quite sure about the whole home assistant, home automation dashboard thing and presenting something that's easy to use as well as simple to configure. Finally, we have something completely the opposite to the previous card. This one has an integration as well and is ideally best used with that. Now, if you have a smart home heating system, you might have some of the functionality offered by this. I know I do, but I'm going to keep on digging a little deeper with this one to see what else can be achieved with it. The card I'm talking about is a better thermostat. And as I say, there is the UI. So that is better thermostat UI. And then there is the integration, which is better thermostat. I'm going to install both. You don't have to install the integration. The card will work without it, but if you have the integration, then it'll work with the advanced features like open windows or your local weather forecast, features which you know some services for smart heating systems may charge extra for. Once installed, you can configure the integration just like any other integration in Home Assistant. You can specify your Temperature sensor, if you want to track humidity, you can do that too. If you've got an outdoor temperature sensor, then you can add that. And you know it's a handy thing to have something like that because you can use that as part of the internal temperature calculations. Many modern heating systems will have some way of determining the outside temperature and using that for the heating. If you've got smart TRVs, then unless either you or the manufacturer have built in temperature compensation, then more often than not, the temperature reported will always be higher than the rest of the room. So you can use another device to determine the real temperature of that room. As for the card itself, as you can see, it's similar to the standard Home Assistant card, but obviously with more options available. Things like battery warnings, which is a really handy feature to have so that you don't end up with cold rooms, eco modes, 
open window detection. The list goes on, all nicely presented on the card as little icons. Both the card and the integration are well documented on their GitHub pages with lots of configuration options available. So there you go, five thermostat cards for your Home Assistant dashboards that will certainly make things a little different from the standard card. Which one are you going to take a look at? Let me know in the comments below. For me, I'm going to have a deeper dive into the a better thermostat card. I know my Drayton Wiser Smart heating system has quite a bit of the same kind of functionality, but I'm interested to see you know, what else this has to offer. Just before I wrap up this video, I want to say a big thank you to those of you who hit the hype button on my last video. That really made quite a difference. It's a new feature on YouTube and I wasn't really aware it had become available for everyone. So if you don't know what it is, then it's a way to support smaller channels like mine. You get to hype up to three uh, channels per week and this helps get the video shown to more people. So anyway, if you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more of these, then don't forget to hit the like button and the hype button and subscribe to the channel. It really does help and lets other people get to see it as well. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.